Hello all, welcome to the sixth session of the SAT series. In this episode, we are going to talk about the trig functions, especially in the context of unit circles. So let's go ahead with this question. So in this question, uh, there is a point P on the circle, O is the origin, Q is also any point on the circle and on the X axis. Angle POQ is equal to K pi. This angle is equal to K pi and sine of k pi is given to be equal to a, we have to find the value of sine of k pi plus pi, right? Now, before we go ahead dealing with this question, there are a couple of concepts which we need to talk about, right? Mainly, we're talking about three things here, as I mentioned on the board. The first is that we need to understand that, okay, pi and degrees are the two units of angles, right? Like the way we have different units for length and time, for angles, for measuring angles, we have two different units, radians and degrees, and this is the relation between the two. So pi radian is equal to 180 degrees, right? So a question could be talking about pi radian, which is nothing but 180 degrees and vice versa. So we need to be very clear on this uh, conversion here, right? The second thing is that, as we all know, there are four quadrants, right? We need to understand whether the sine or cosine or tangent all these trig functions will be positive or negative in which quadrant, okay? So to remember that or to understand that, we have to look at this diagram here, right? So let's say that we have uh, this kind of a cross here and we have these right angle triangles in each of the quadrants, correct? Now, obviously this is positive, right? This is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. So this is positive, uh, these portions are negative. Similarly on the x-axis, this is positive, this side is negative, and all the diagonals are positive, right? Now, if we look at the first quadrant, right, let's talk about cosine. So cosine of theta is nothing but adjacent over hypotenuse, so positive over positive, so cosine would be positive here in the first quadrant, right? Let's look at cosine maybe in the second quadrant, Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative over positive. So essentially cosine in the second quadrant would be negative. Similarly, cosine in the third quadrant would also be negative. Cosine in the fourth quadrant would be positive, right? So in that fashion, we can understand whether any of the trig functions, sine or cosine or tangent or cotangent or anything else will be positive or negative in which quadrant, correct? The third thing which we have to Kind of understand is that whenever we are dealing with 180 degrees, what I mean is that let's say we're talking about sine of 180 degrees plus theta, plus or minus of theta, it will remain sine. So the value will remain sine, right? So sine of 180 degrees plus theta, plus or minus theta is equal to sine theta. Similarly, cosine of 180 degrees plus minus theta is equal to cos theta, right? The same will not happen when we are dealing with 90 degrees, it will flip. But as long as we are dealing with 180 degrees, the value will remain the same. Sine will remain the same, cosine will remain cosine. All we got to do is to find out that in which quadrant that sine or cosine is lying and depending upon in which quadrant it is lying, we will have to put a positive or a negative sign. For example, let's say we're talking about uh, cosine of 210 degrees, right? Now, cosine of 210 degrees can be written as cosine of 180 degrees plus 30 degrees, right? And we just saw that whenever we are dealing with 180 degrees, cosine will remain cosine, right? So cosine of 180 degrees plus 30 degrees is nothing but cosine of 30 degrees, right? Cosine remains cosine, right? Sin, cosine of 180 degrees plus theta is equal to cosine of theta, right? Now, 180 degrees plus 30 degrees, in which quadrant will this angle lie? This angle will lie in the third quadrant, right? 210 degrees, it will lie in the third quadrant. And in the third quadrant, the value of cosine is negative, right? Because adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine in the third quadrant is negative, hence we'll put a negative sign here. So cosine of 180 degrees plus 30 degrees is equal to minus of cosine 30 degrees, right? It will Sound a bit confusing, but as we go forward, as we do a few questions, it will uh, become more clear. But just to reiterate, 
these are the three things we are talking about. We are talking about the conversion between the two units of angles, radians and degrees. We are talking about understanding what will be uh, the values of this cosine, sine and all these trig functions in different quadrants, whether they will be positive or negative. And the third thing is that whenever we are dealing with 180 degrees, let's say, sine will remain sine, cosine will remain cosine, they will not flip over. Okay. Now, let's go back to this question. We have to find the value of sine of k pi plus pi. Right? Sine of k pi plus pi. Right? Pi is nothing but 180 degrees. We just saw that whenever we are dealing with 180 degrees, sine remains sine. So sine of 180 degrees plus any angle is equal to the sine of this angle. Right? We just saw that sine of 180 degrees plus minus theta is equal to sine theta, right? Sine remains sine. It doesn't flip when we're dealing with 180 degrees, right? So essentially, sine of k pi plus pi or sine of k pi, k pi plus 180 degrees will be equal to the value of sine of k pi, correct? And sine of k pi is given as a. So the value of this, just the value of this would be a, right? But now we have to see whether it will be positive or negative, correct? Now, k pi is given ang this angle, right? So k pi is this. When we're going to add 180 degrees to this, we're going to be landing in the fourth quadrant. If this is k pi, k pi plus pi, or k pi plus 180 degrees will be somewhere here. So we are talking about the fourth quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, the value of sine is negative, right? So this is our theta in the previous diagram. This is negative, this is positive, this is positive. Sine of theta would be negative, perpendicular over hypotenuse, right? Hence, we will put a negative sign here. So sine of k pi plus pi is equal to negative a. Okay, let's go ahead with another question. Uh, so we have the situation wherein uh, point P is on this circle, O is the origin, Q is uh, one of the x-intercepts on the circle, angle POQ is A degrees, the coordinates of point P are given as minus 1 comma root 3 and we have to find the value of cos of A degrees, right? So right off the bat we know that cos of A, cos of A would be nothing but OT over OP, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So cos of A is OT over OP, right? Now we drop a perpendicular from P to the x-axis, let's say it intersects at point T, so this is a right angle triangle here, right? So P, T, and O, this is a right angle triangle here. This length is already given to us as minus one because the coordinate of P is minus one, x-coordinate, and the y-coordinate is root three, right? Uh, if we just look at the values, right, of this right angle triangle, we can use the Pythagoras theorem to find uh, the length of OP. So OP square is equal to PP square plus TO square, right? Um, just leveraging the Pythagoras theorem here. PT square is root three square plus one square, which is equal to three plus one, which is equal to four. So OP square is equal to four, you take the square root on both the sides and we get OP is equal to 2. Essentially, this length is equal to 2. Now, cos of A is OT over OP. OT is 1, OP is 2, so 1 over 2, right? Now, whether it will be positive or negative, right? So, we're talking about the second quadrant and here the cosine is negative, right? Because this length is negative, this is positive, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, the cosine in the second quadrant is negative, hence we will put a negative sign here. So answer to cos of a degree will be minus 1 over 2. Just to quickly reiterate, right, all we are doing is just leveraging Pythagoras theorem to find the length of this side. Once we have the length of this side, 
we know cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse which is 1 over 2 to see whether it's positive or negative we have to see in which quadrant it lies in this case we are talking about the second quadrant the cosine is negative here and we put a negative sign hopefully you guys like the video and it gave you a good perspective in terms of the different nuances of trigonometry especially in the context of the unit circle if you did uh, please do like and subscribe see you in the next session